And the two most important things in a studio are these and what's in between. In a previous video on the Crates Motel, I outlined the importance of preparation and we went through my mixing template. Today, I want to go through my mastering template. Hi, welcome to the Crates Motel, my name's Conan, and in today's video, we're gonna run through my mastering template. Now, I'm predominantly a mastering engineer, that's what I do professionally, but that's come from years and years of being a mixing engineer. Mastering isn't something that I just jumped into. Now, I first sat behind a mixing desk in the early 80s when I was a kid during my summer job, and I carried on mixing through the 80s and into the 90s, I got into production, and around about the mid 90s, I got into mastering. Since then, I've mastered and I've mixed and I've carried on producing, now I learn something new every single day, without fail. And that's the thing, you never stop learning. Now before I get started, I just want to say disclaimer alert. Now what I'm about to go through in this video is just my opinion, my way of working. There is no wrong or right, there are no rules, it's just my way, it's my workflow. And I hope that somebody out there can take something from this. So let's jump in and we'll go through my mastering template. So here we are in Studio One from Personas. This is my mastering template. Now, I use Personas Studio One at the moment for mastering, but I've used pretty much every DAW at some point or another, but I've settled on Studio One for the moment, just because I'm really familiar with it, it does everything I need it to do, and I just really like the workflow of it, but it's just my personal choice. Uh, you can use any DAW basically to master it, despite what some people might tell you. You can do everything that you need to do. Um, I've used, well, we used to print to reel to reel tape in the mid 90s when I started, but I've used Cubase, Ableton, Logic, Pro Tools, Adobe Audition, Sequoia, Soundforge, WaveLab, Cakewalk, uh, pretty much everything. I don't, I haven't used Reaper, I don't think, but uh, pretty much everything at some point or another I've mastered on it. Just because I wanted to find the DAW that was right for me, at the moment it's Persona Studio One. Now, Persona Studio One does have its own mastering window called Project. Uh, but you can't do any automation in there. So I tend to use the song window because I do use automation in mastering sometimes and I need to be able to do that. It's quite important. So I use the song window. It works for me and that's why I have this template set up in this way. Now starting from the top, we have the reference track and the pre-master track. Now the pre-master will be on the pre-master channel obviously and the reference will also be the pre-master and it's there for me to be able to reference between them. The reference will not be touched by any processing and is routed directly to the main output. The pre-master will be routed to the master, which is where I do all of the processing and that master in turn will then be routed to the main out. So when I print the master, it's from the master going to the main interface. Now, as well as having the reference and the pre-master set up to reference between, I do also use an AB plugin from Plugin Alliance called ADPTR. It's not essential, but I find it really, really useful. It enables me to have the pre-master on here to reference against. I can also add in other reference tracks that I might want to use to reference against, or if the client has given me some reference tracks to reference against, they may have said, I kind of want this vibe on the track, so I want it to sound like this. To be honest with you, most clients that I master for will send me some reference tracks to reference against uh, so that I can get in the kind of ballpark with their track. Like I said, it's not essential to own ADPTR, but as a mastering engineer and a mixing engineer, it does make your job a lot easier. So on the reference track and the pre-master track, I have the BX meter and the Melder Productions uh, multi-analyzer. The BX meter gives me an RMS readout. I've used it for a long time. I tend to use RMS when I'm mastering. I will check the LUFS just to see where it is, but I like to get an RMS level when I master. And this is just my favorite RMS meter, to be honest. I've used it for a long time, I'm familiar with it. But there's a whole range of meters that you can buy and also get free. I'll link some below, some free ones. Uh, obviously your DAW will also have metering. But yeah, like I said, I'm just used to the BX meter and the multi-analyzer. I don't use it all of the time, but it's particularly good to visually reference between tracks because you can color each track and it will give you a visual reference of those tracks. So you should definitely check out the Melder Multi-Analyzer. In fact, check out anything by Melder because they're amazing. They're kind of a little bit of a secret plug-in type sort of company that people don't tend to mention. They mention the bigger companies. No one really mentions Melder. They make amazing plugins and I use them daily as a mix engineer and as a mastering engineer. Now I just want to point out 
that using metering and visual references is really, really useful in mastering, but it's not something that you should rely on. Really, you should be relying on your ears, in my opinion. But it is good to have visual reference. Now, it could have been a really, really long day. You're working to a deadline. You don't really trust your ears fully anymore. So you need a visual reference just to kind of check things against. And it's always good to have a backup to check against. You know, I mean, as humans, we do make mistakes. We can't, you know, especially when we're tired, we're not going to hear maybe the full frequency range we're used to hearing when we first wake up in the morning. You know, and, you know, you, I guess the first half an hour of a day, your ears might be in perfect condition, but as the day goes on, you will get fatigue. So it's good to have these visual references, but I don't make critical decisions using these visual references. I just use them as a backup, especially checking like maybe some, some of the information in the low end, some of the information in the high end, uh, around 20K and 20 Hertz that we're not gonna be able to hear, but you might wanna see whether they are actually present in the track that you're mastering or mixing. So on the actual master channel where I do all of the processing, I don't have any metering because I just want that out of the way. But if I want to meter the master channel, I have an effect send set to zero dB and I will meter what's coming out of the master channel here if I want to, if I need to. So on here I have SPL's Hawkeye, which gives you really, really accurate readouts of LUFS and RMS, that kind of thing. I don't tend to use that mastering tracks, to be honest. I, I might use it if I'm mastering for TV or film because you have to be a lot more accurate with your sound levels. So that I do tend to use for TV and film stuff, but not as much for mastering music. And again, I have the BX meter on there. I have the BX meter on all the channels, to be honest. So and then on the main out, again, I have a range of metering. Now, it might look like I've got all of these metering things and I've gone on about the fact that I don't use visual references. I don't make critical decisions to visual references. But again, like I said, I really want to reiterate is that I have these visual references and I want them there for any eventuality, whether I use them or not, just having them in my template means that, oh, I need a VU meter, there we go, it's done. Oh, I need an AB, there it is, it's done. I don't wanna be going through lists and lists of plugins to try and find something when I'm in the flow. Uh, mix tool on Personas, I think most DOWs will have something like that. Uh, it's really great to be able to reference mid-side, swap channels, invert, that kind of thing. So um, I have that on there as well. And then Melder Productions M Analyzer at the end. So like I said, they're just really there for backup, for reference. And you know, there might be one situation in a month where I might think, oh, I need a VU meter, but it's there, it's ready for me to use. I don't have to go through lists of plugins. And then on the listen bus, which is something I love about Personia Studio One, it doesn't affect anything at all. So I could leave it on and it's not gonna print it. So on here, because I master exclusively and mix exclusively in headphones, and I have done for three years now, I like to have some of the headphone software like Sonarworks, Can Opener, which creates crossfeed, uh, Reveal 2 from Order Z, uh, which is really good. I use Order Z headphones, so it's specifically made for that. I don't make critical decisions using these plugins, but I use them just as a reference. You know, the same way that an engineer would use multiple monitors for reference. It just puts me in a space just gives me a chance to maybe hear, you know, with the cross feed that you don't get inside headphones normally. Sonarworks can help correct some of the weaknesses that you might have in your headphones. They're just useful. I mean, the, the Waves NX programs are really good as well. They'll put you in a space. Uh, Slate do some programs like that, but you need specific headphones for those. And Acoustica Audio do a great one called Sienna. So I do use those sometimes. They'll put me in a particular space, like I said but I don't make critical decisions on them. I don't use any software on my headphones to make critical decisions. I just have these as a reference to be able to drop in anytime I like, and they're there. And then finally, before my headphones get to me, I go through my Phonitor 2 from SPL, which has a crossfeed matrix on it, which again is something that I'll click in sometimes just to check, but I don't make critical decisions with that turned on. So to the mastering channel, which is where I do all of the work. So on here, I will have the EQ, the compressors, the clippers, the limiters, anything that I would want to add to the master to enhance it and bring it up to the level that I need to bring it up to. So when I print, the master channel is going straight into my RME interface. So I only print what's coming off the master channel. So that's how my mastering template is set up. Now let's just give you a quick example of it working.
So if I just press play, and you'll see that the pre-master is going into the master channel, and the master channel is going into the main interface. If I was to mute the pre-master and just play the reference, the reference is going directly to the main interface. So any processing I do on the master channel will not affect this. This will always give me an untouched, raw, how the track was when it came to me sound. And that is it. That's my mastering template. Now I can't stress enough the importance of templates. For me, they take out all of the boring stuff in the morning, all the boring stuff when I start a new master for a client. I don't have to do the routing, the color coding, all my metering is in place. And it just, it just makes my job a lot easier. It just makes the workflow better. And I can just crack on with what I need to do, which is mastering a client's track as quickly as possible and with the least amount of effort. So I really hope you guys got something out of this. Now obviously my template is specifically for Persona Studio One, but this template has been built up over years using different DAWs and different techniques. And so it could be applied to any other DAW. I will provide a link below for you to download this preset. Please feel free to use it or change it or anything. It's there for you to use and I'd love it if you did. But if you don't use Studio One, then maybe you can take some of the techniques and ideas from this and it'll inspire you to set up your own template in your own DAW. So thanks ever so much for watching. Please subscribe for more mixing and mastering tutorials and reviews. This is the Crates Motel. My name's Conan. Until next time.